Okay, practice problems part two, problem number 10. What it basically says is better built home stock is selling for 28 bucks a share. So that's its current price. And has a dividend yield of 1.2%. What is the amount of the last dividend paid if the growth rate is 3.2%? So they're telling you that its current yield <coughs> is 1.2%. Remember, dividend yield is the dividend, the current dividend, current, which is the, the, the next dividend, over the price. So the dividend yield is 0.012, and the price is 28. So you just basically figure for D1, which is basically the price times the yield, and that gives you D1, which is 0.336. So that is the dividend, the current dividend. They want you to find the last dividend. Well, they tell you the growth rate is 1.032. So you just take D1 divided by 1.032 because you're discounting back, so it's 1 plus the rate of growth. And so 0.336 divided by 1.032 gives you the past dividend, <coughs> which is 33 cents. Problem number 11, Dixie Hardware paid a dividend, paid a dividend, that's D0, of a buck 20 last year and has a policy of increasing its dividend by 2.5% annually. How much are you willing to pay to purchase one share of stock considering that you require a 14% return? It's pretty straightforward. Remember the formula, PT equals DT plus 1 over R minus G. You're trying to figure it out for period zero because you want to figure out what the present value of that is. And you know that DT, so if you want the present value, which is P equals zero, then you know that uh, DT plus one is D1. And over here, they told you that the last dividend, D0, was a buck 20. Told you the growth rate's two and a half percent. So D1 is a buck 23, so you have to figure that out first. And then you put DT plus one, which is D1, a buck 23 over R minus G. Now there's two ways you can do this, but <clears throat> this is the easiest way. So that your uh, R is 0 0.14, 14%. Your growth rate is 0 0.025. So the price would be $10.70, 69, 0.695 rounded up. And that's how you figure that. And then problem number 12 is one with the cash flows. Basically, Yorktown Pharmacy recently announced that it will pay annual dividends of 80 cents, 92 cents, and a buck 10 over the next three years. And after that, it'll pay, uh, the, the dividends will increase by 3% annually. So that becomes just a perpetual cash flow. You can do it as um, D over R, or I like to use still DT plus 1 over R minus G. And the reason is P0 equals D over R, and that's for a constant dividend where it doesn't change. It just stays the same. In this case, it's going to stay the same. But it, it gets you at P0, which you really need in this case is to be at P3 because the first dividend where they, they are going to be at 3% growth is D4 and which is DT plus 1 so you want to get your price back to period 3 initially because the, the, the new dividends they tell you the first three dividends and after that they grow at 3% and they grow at 3% constantly so if you use the constant dividend, dividend growth formula PT equals DT plus 1 over R minus G this formula right here. So then you figure out for period three, the current, the period three would be the present value of all those future dividends. So P3 equals D4 over R minus G. You know that D4 is um, two and a half percent, did they say? Three percent. Three percent more than D3 because they tell you the first three dividends, and then after that, 80, 92, and a buck 10, and after that, they grow at 3%. So a buck 10 
which is D3 times 1.03 is 1.133. So that's D4. So D4 over R, which is 0.12, and G is 0.03, that's the growth rate for dividends, equals 12.5889. That's P3, the price of those future dividend flows discounted back to period three. That goes right here. And then you've got the first three dividends, the 80 cents, the 92 cents, and the buck 10. And you have to discount them with that 12% growth rate, I mean 12% uh, required return rate. This one is times one period uh, to the first power because it's for one period. This is the second power because this is the second D2. And this is uh, 1.12 over uh, to the third power because you're discounting it three years. Now you're also, since this is P3, you're going to have to discount this three years also. So you can go through and do the calculations on each one of these and then add them together or you can use your cash flow in your calculator and figure it out and that's a lot quicker. And the nice thing about that, <clears throat> the nice thing about that is you don't have to These two you can just add together, the buck ten and the twelve, because they're both being discounted from the third period. So instead of doing two separate calculations for these, because you want to put it in one cash flow for the third period, is you just add these together and put it in the one cash flow. So when you do the cash flow numbers, and we'll do it right now, cash flow one. That's zero. Remember, you only use that when you're figuring out like net present value. Cash flow one is 80 cents. So 0.8, enter. And that's for one period. Two is 0 0.92, 92 cents. 0 0.92, enter, down, and down again. Cash flow three. Now, this is where you add these two together. A buck ten plus twelve five eight eight nine, so that's thirteen six eight eight nine. So thirteen dollars point six eight eight nine. Enter. No, I just I entered that wrong. It's supposed to be thirteen. And I got sixteen. See, my calculator is sixteen. So you don't even have to put that in. You can hit clear. Go to cash flows again. Remember, it stores everything. So there's the 80 cents for one period. There's the 92 cents for one period. And there's the 16,889. Now you can just re-enter that number. It's 136,889. 13.6889. Enter. Now it's changed that. I could have done that the first time. I didn't have that arrow back. And that's for one period. Press down cash flow for You don't care about that. But what you're trying to find is the net present value of all those streams of cash flow. You hit net present value. And remember, it asks for the interest rate. Now you know the interest rate is 12%. Enter, down, and it's got net present value zero. Remember, that's because you got to hit compute. And so the net present value of all those cash flows is 11.19, which is the same if you've gone through with these calculations and add them all together. That's the answers for the rest of part two.